Previously, in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage, our party found themselves in a tense situation inside the trading shop of Kinrob, the Hobgoblin. The party had been sent here to kill Kinrob, who was seemingly nothing more than an old trader, an act that they little, had little desire to perform. But the introduction of a goblin baby into their midst and Kinrob's cagey defensive responses put the party on edge. It became clear that Kinrob <coughs> was more than he seemed and that something was going on. As the party continued to pry, Kinrob tired of the ruse, suddenly revealing his true form, a hulking, blue-skinned, black-clawed Oni. The party leapt into action, with Matashtai using his newfound artifact to climb partway up the wall, attacking the Oni from a difficult angle for it to, to fend from. The Oni, in turn, sent out an icy burst of magic, severely wounding several members of the party and coating a good portion of the shop in icicles. But it wasn't enough. A few hasted attacks from the party and a particularly vicious sneak attack from Bones felled the creature. In the aftermath, Bones set about removing Kenrob's head as well as his hands, showing the party that his distaste for humanoid Bones did not extend to giant kind. Matashtai spent time seeing to the goblin child successfully calming it. Ezra searched the area, and Ashes set up watch. This caused Ashes to be the first to spot and speak to the approaching troop of hobgoblins. Their leader, Rolvuk, made it clear that the hobgoblins were here to finish Kinrob, should the party have failed to do so. He also seemed quite impressed that the party was successful without loss. After this exchange, the party headed back northward, escorted by Rolvuk and his squad. They stopped by the hidey hole of the goblin child they had met earlier in order to return her doll. She, in turn, gave Ashes a turquoise dolphin as a reward. With that done, the party returned to Azrok's hold. Azrok and his second-in-command, Lurkana, seemed impressed by the party's efficient success, accepting Kinrob's heb as a trophy and even giving over the signet ring and finger of Crisando Rosnar, a nobleman the party had previously been tasked with locating. Azrok at this point seemed to take it as a matter of fact that the party and the Legion were now allies. He ordered the hall cleared except for his war leaders, and began to make motions for planning an attack against the drow of House Avrindar. This was momentarily delayed, however, when the goblin child Matashtai was still carrying began to cry loudly, something that seemed to startle Azrok quite a bit. After the child was taken back to the goblin den, the war council began. When the party showed willingness to use themselves as the tip of the spear, so to speak, Azrok allowed them great freedom in making plans openly answering their questions and having his war leaders do the same. Rolvuk and Lorcana were especially knowledgeable about different resources and locations, though Ognok and Ozener favored a more direct approach, they did still contribute their own ideas. The party was informed of the basic chain of command of the drow, its three leaders, as well as an apparent monster that the drow had at their command. The party was also informed of the different directions of possible attack, including the main route through the eastern Stromkolder ruins and, more un uh, and a more unknown route through the temple complex further up the Sargoth River. Azrok was unwilling to commit the bulk of the Legion's forces on an attack, saying that an undefended hold would leave the Legion no retreat or defensible position, as well as having the issue of leaving their flanks and rear open to attack from other potential enemies. But the Legion did have other resources at hand. Gut Golem, Nerazar the Defeated, and a creature with necromantic powers by the name of Preta Kripa were all mentioned as possible options, though each seemed to have certain downsides. Matashtai was vocal in his distaste for the option, but eventually the group did decide to meet with the Kripa. Azrok dismissed the council, allowing the party the chance to weigh their options, meet with the Kripa, and rest before a second and hopefully final council would be hosted. 
As he returned to his throne, Azrok stumbled, and in that instant, something clicked in Matashtai's mind. Pieces of a puzzle coming together. At that moment, Matashtai realized Azrok, the Legion commander, was blind. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.